So do gamma motor neurons have anything to do with stretch reflex? Is the is the elephant in the room, isn't it? Yes and no. You know the yes and you know the no. I'll say it out anyway. Yes, because they do set the muscle sensitivity. And this sensitivity, uh, in, remember the rubber band thing that, that I did? So by setting the sensitivity, they sort of adjust or they set the stretch reflexes intensity of the response. So if they are more taut and now you stretch them, they will respond more than if the gamma efferent is not very angry and it's just basal level and now you stretch it, the response will be more mellow. This, you move on to the no because it doesn't have any role to play in the reflex muscle contractions brought on by the muscle stretch. Functions of the gamma motor efferents are twofold, sensory related and motor related. Please sensory related. This one line, this one line says it all. It regulates the sensitivity of the intrafusal muscle fiber. That's it. This is, if you remember this, you are good to go. And if you remember my my lecture in which I uh, took a rubber band and stretched it and then plucked it in the middle to show you that if it's stretched, uh, the response is more vi vi more vibrations <clears throat> per pluck, per, per, per picking. And if it's less stretched, then the vibration is lesser. Imagine there's a muscle which is rich in bag fibers, nuclear bag fibers. Nuclear bag fibers are innervated by which type of gamma? Dynamic. So these muscles will be extra sensitive to quick changes naturally. If there's a, there's a muscle which is rich in nuclear chain fibers, it will be sensitive to static changes, i.e. the bulk, the bulk amount changes in length. This is rate of change, amount of change. This is the dynamic response. This is the static response. I'm just connecting the gamma efferents to it now. Just not, nothing new, to be honest. And this is where the co-activation now comes in. So in the motor related function of gamma motor, we've already done this. If you, if this is a muscle, it's relaxed. Muscle spindle fibers are sensitive to stretch. So it's minding its own business. Now you contract the extrafusal. So this is extrafusal. This is the spindle. So you understand, right? So this is the extrafusal. You contract it without contracting the intrafusal fiber. Look at what happens. Dila. If you were to hypothetically contract the extrafusal only, this is the problem that you'll get. This is a bad problem to have because now the muscle fiber has slackened and it's not sensitive to stretch. It has literally stopped working. So how do you, how, how do you go around this? You contract the intrafusal fiber along. So you co-activate alpha and gamma motor neurons so that you don't have this situation here. This situation, bad situation. This situation, good situation. So extrafusal and interfusal both contract. The spindle gets to be taut and gets to keep its function. And very importantly, guys, there's something else that goes on Question coming up. Tell me one more bad thing about this scenario. This laxity, one issue I've told you, the one issue is it stops uh, being sensitive to stretch, which it's, which is its function. And that's obviously a big boo-boo. What else? Why does this cause contraction issues? And it does cause contraction issues, by the way. What happens when you stretch the spindle? It contracts. It would help you in this scenario. Will it help you in this scenario? If the spindle would be taut, it will induce the stretch reflex valley contraction to help with the whole gross contraction, wouldn't it? When this got laxed, it stopped the stretch reflex induced augmented contraction. Remember the hybrid example that I gave? 
In this, the hybrid would be the extrafusal running on fuel and the intrafusal running on electric. So when you contract the extrafusal fibers, you at least don't want the intrafusal to negate the contraction. Well, they will negate it if they go lax, because when they go lax, they stop helping the extrafusal fiber by stretch reflex induced contractions, which are supposed to help the extrafusal contraction. The damping function, by the way, the averaging out or damping, it's the same thing. Guyton mentions damping and averaging out. Uh, this is a muscle fiber. Uh, this is a muscle which is stimulated with the muscle spindle intact at an impulse rate of eight per second. And this is a muscle which was stimulated with the muscle spindle dissected out. And you can see the wreck that it has occurred, that it has taken place. When the muscle spindle is functioning properly, look at the smooth contraction profile of the muscle. Even though you are stimulating it in, in pulses, just like the spinal cord does, no stretch reflex here. So when you take out muscle spindle, you take out uh, its uh, augmentation, the hybridness of the muscle spindle, this is what it looks like. It looks very angry. It looks all over the place. This is not graceful and you won't get work done. Imagine getting up like this. Okay. Maybe in the morning you do get up like this. 